Okay, hi, my I'm Janusz Urbanowicz, Janusz, and I will be talking about quite uh, not interesting subject, which is legal framework for cybersecurity in Poland. So at least I put, put some photos oh, that look, look, look nice. Okay. Okay. This is where I come come from. This is Warsaw. And uh, I want to talk to you about how the Polish government de deployed, implemented the Polish cyber, the cyber security directive of the European Union. Uh, which is not the prime directive of the Star Trek, but it is uh, European wide regulation. A directive is a legislative act that uh, is not a direct law, but every European member state has to implement it in, its of I in their own way. And uh, the criteria for implementation is fulfilling some, uh, some uh, requirements of the directive, but you are not, you, c you can, you are given sometimes some uh, guidelines how to, how to do so, but everybody uh, when the directive is implemented, everybody is quite in the dark. So I tell you how we did it in Poland. Okay, this is the core tenets of the directive. The first is that a state must establish a cyber national cybersecurity strategy. Our strategy can be read online in English uh, after this QR code if you are inter interested. I don't think it is very interesting, but if you want. Uh, basically, the strategy says that uh, we need to do uh, lots of things to make the state secure, and we need. Uh, and the first step in implementing the directive is the establishing of such a document. Because of quite uh, stupid reas legal reasons in Poland, this document cannot be named strategy because uh, only one ministry is allowed to write strategies, and this is not the Ministry of, the, the of Digital Affairs, so it's called a framework. And uh, all the directive establishes quite obvious, uh, quite obvious requirement of every member state uh, talking to each other about cybersecurity. Uh, also, the next uh, next condition is that cyber uh, every state must have some uh, must have some cybersecurity capability, and then. Uh, there is establishment of critical infrastructure, which probably uh, you know what it means. And there are two categories of services that are the core of the work around the NIS directive. Uh, those are essential services and digital service provider. I will get to that in a moment. Okay, where are we? Poland is a half of Texas. Uh, about size and population of Cali uh, of California, and this is not a big state, but it is. Uh, so we are the first of the former communist countries to reach the status of uh, major market. By the way, we are in the NATO. We are in the European Union. Okay, so we need to implement the directive, so we make a law. I actually was somewhat uh, involved in writing that law. And this is the National Cybersecurity Bill of July 5, 28. And what the law says. First, the law, uh, this is mandated by the directive, the law establishes that there should be a person or an, or an office in the country that is responsible for deploying the directive and for cybersecurity. And we have the, the government plenipotentiary. I don't know if, the, if this is the right word, but the other I know it would be proxy and this is not a good word. And why this guy represents the government in cybersecurity uh, cyber security affairs. His name is Karol Okoński. It doesn't really matter right now. But uh, what he's doing, he's responsible for the directive. He's uh, responsible for coordination of state level uh, cyber capability. And if there is a law in the world that involves, involves cybersecurity, the guy, this guy, this office, uh, 
comments on it, uh, approves it, and uh, gives correction. Okay, the three certs. Why I said there is uh, coordination between the national level certs? Because again, from pol for political reasons that I won't go into, we don't have uh, one country level, national level cert, but we have three. We have the military, uh, military cert. Uh, there is some uh, v v the, the certs. The, the certs are uh, in some places are called called certs. In some places there are certs because in the law there are called certs. But two of them uh, has the right to use a name cert because they are licensed from from cert CC. So it I will use it interchangeably. And the military set, uh, military set uh, covers the military staff, military networks. Uh, we don't really don't know what what they do. Uh, there is a ministry, ministry of Internal Affairs, uh, which is the uh, set gov PL. They cover the central uh, government. Would we would say this is the federal government set, and they cover critical infrastructure and the and the. Uh, terrorism, counterintelligence stuff, uh, so th things like that. Uh, when uh, we had the Lazarus Group uh, incident, we it was them that handled it. And uh, actually, in the d in the bill, there is it is defined as it. The military said covers military. The government said covers this and that, and the rest goes to the Ministry of Digital Affairs. Which has a cert as a part of uh, uh, of NASC Institute, we are where which is where w which is where I work in, and uh, we are the fallback. We are the fallback. If everybody, if anybody don't doesn't know where to report, probably should report to us. Unless they know the critical infrastructure, then they report to the government cert and go to the military. They don't talk talk to us too much. Okay, let's b get back to the essential services. What is an essential service? Oh. Essential services are defined by the NIS directive, and they are something like critical infrastructure, but, but less. For example, you have the na national power grid, which is a critical infrastructure, but Let's uh, let's uh, who can imagine what would happen if Amazon stopped working uh, working in the United States? Amazon is down. What do you do? What do you eat? What do you read? Excuse me. Amazon. 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 Okay. Or eBay. Or I don't know. Oh, Netf Netflix is down. What? Do no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What do you do then? <laughs> Okay, so th 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 those things are not critical infrastructure, but they are essential services, basically. And the directive defines the sectors of services as uh, mining, which also involves like uh, gas pipelines and uh, oil, pi oil pi pipelines and things like that. The utilities like water, waste, uh, electric electricity, no, electricity is... Uh, yeah, I, I think electricity, yes. Healthcare, which also, uh, it is not only the doctors and hospitals, but also uh, pharmacies, pharmacy companies, and so on. Transport in four, there are four sectors, of subsectors of transport, air road, uh, rail, and uh, uh, water. Water is the least important, I think. There's banking and there's separate finance. It is like the d di difference between the bank and the PayPal. And uh, there is the digital infrastructure, which is uh, the core infrastructure of the internet, internet exchange points, DNS providers, but not the G DNS registry. The DNS registry is uh, for .pl is run by NASC and it's critical infrastructure, not uh, essential services operator. And there is a civic administration which is not uh, covered by the directive, but it is in the cybersecurity bill uh, because uh, the government cert only covers uh, the central administration, we, we would say federal, and
and there is a lot of territorial administration, there are self-government offices and so on. So they, uh, so they are a separate, uh, considered a separate sector and we are the third responsible for them. And there's a digital service providers, which is, uh, as, as I said before, search and, uh, search and giant cloud providers and digital marketplaces like Amazon, like eBay, the uh, search and giants, of course, Google. Google is down, internet is down. We don't have much search and giants in Poland, but we have some, uh, I think, price uh, and search and giants. It, 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 is it uh, falls into this, cate this category and cloud providers. Amazon Web Services is down. We don't have any internet working, basically. We have our cl cloud providers, too. Uh, okay, what do you need to be considered an es essential service? First of all, the service must depend on some IT, some digital infrastructure, which is not meaning that, uh, for example, you are a water work uh, company and then you have billing department and there is only computer for issuing the uh, the payment notices no but but uh, in the modern then you that you wouldn't be an essential service of digital infrastructure but in the, the reality everything is connected everything is online so if you can have at least one valve put on the internet or sh shouldn't or uh, one valve connected to the int uh, to the some network uh, then you are your service depends on digital infrastructure and then the second criteria i think uh, one of them or two of them must be uh, fulfilled to be considered considered essential service the second criteria is that all other essential services uh, depend on your service like the hospital cannot fac function without the water and uh, another criteria there are exact numbers, but I skipped them. A lot of people depends on your service, like uh, a hospital in the, in the large province or large, uh, large water, work, water works in the large city or large bank. And uh, again, a market share, which is quite different. And the third uh, criteria of size is uh, wide geographical area. If there is one power grid on a very low uh, populated area, but the, there is a huge area, it will be an essential service even if, you, it, if it doesn't fulfill the market share or the uh, number of citizens impacted. This is the criteria. Uh, again, lack of service, uh, a criterion of that lack of service impacts the economy of society or society. Again, Amazon is down, Amazon is down eBay is down, Google is down, that fulfills that. Uh, you can get out from this if there are alternative means to provide the service without the IT, but we are, li we are living in the 21st century, so not really. And there might be other sector-specific criteria, like, uh, for example, you are an airport, and uh, you are a, sm a small airport, but uh, from some for for some reason you are an important small airport and then you are critical uh, essential infrastructure <coughs> and this uh, the directive imposes some obligations on the critical on the essential services providers and the first one is that you need uh, to have one guy named by the his name and phone number that is responsible to talking uh, to the outer world about cybersecurity and the name and phone number of this guy is submitted to a uh, response uh, to a national level cert <coughs> and when we need to call you about some hacking in infrastructure we call this guy and he's responsible for proceeding later the other is uh, the other are more difficult to fulfill because you need to have some risk management and uh, security management process in this organization this process is not uh, not unlike ISO 27000 but it is not exactly ISO because uh, I guess it is not allowed to put a norm into into a law and you need to get some kind of coverage by a search commercial search or sector search I'll get to this later 
and uh, basically you need to have uh, somebody to call when you are hacked. And then you are obligate, obligated to report incidents to a uh, appropriate national level cert. And this is a very important point because if it wasn't for the law, nobody uh, would report anything. We tried to get it working without the law and it didn't work. And you have to pass a security audit every two years. The auditors have to, to, they have to be, I think, ISACA, uh, ISACA certified or some, some other organization like that. Okay, what we do at the national level search? Kids. Uh, threat monitoring and analysis. This is uh, basically we are supposed to be the, the place which uh, the government calls when something is happening and we, we are obligated to know what's happening. It's not easy. We need to keep an eye of the known vulnerabilities. We are forced. Uh, we are forced or made to uh, uh, talk to the other countries' certs about threat and vulnerabilities. We can uh, certify solutions and various magic boxes that vendors push. We, we write a yearly cybersecurity report for the government. We are supposed to do public awareness and education. And the most important, we do incident response coordination, but not is incident handling. The law is that uh, we are responsible for um, response and coordination, but not incident handling, which means you need to have your own uh, cert or uh, service, uh, service for your organization, and they will do the analysis and so on but uh, we do passing information between you and the organizations organizations you need to talk to and also we build this big picture this way your organization only knows that they will have been hacked but we know for example we can know that lots of organizations in this area or uh, of this kind of this sector has been hacked so we can uh, coordinate the wider bigger response and, uh, and security research Okay, our mandate, our organization mandate is uh, quite wider. Uh, as we are the fallback cert, uh, the coordination, f we mostly do the coordination, my former team is the center for coordination. We build the big picture. Uh, we p p uh, the directive established the European network of uh, national certs and we are part of that. Uh, we, co we cooperate with the Data Protection Authority for the uh, Personal Data Protection uh, Law. And there is a uh, cool thing, actually. I sent the first one. We have in Poland, we have something like your emergency uh, notification system, but it works on SMS messages and applications and phones. And where is a big vulnerability or a big incident that affects a lot of people? we can send a cyber warning to all people in Poland or in some region. And for example, when there, is, uh, when there was a, a big, big uh, vulnerability in, in Windows, I don't remember the number, we sent a warning that you should update your Windows right now because you can be hacked right now. And uh, lots of people did so. It was cool. Uh, so it is... Uh, Regional, uh, it, it is a Polish for uh, regional uh, warning system, a DPA, a Data Protection Authority. It is an office that is uh, for uh, that is established by the GDPR, and it is like a national wide commissary or something for the data personal data protection. Yeah. And the. Uh, this is not a good thing, but we have to do it. We also are a point of report for child pornography and uh, harmful information. Child pornography is illegal in Poland and uh, propagating terrorism and some other things like hate, hate speech, but we also uh, handle things like uh, uh, 
popularizing an unhealthy lifestyle like uh, pro-ana stuff and uh, cyberbullying and so on, we are, uh, we are tackling it. And when you are an essential, when you are ev almost everyone in Poland or not in Poland, you can report an incident that consider it that concerns Poland to us. This is the actual form. NSCC. It was quite hard to explain to lawyers, but we need, but because the lawyers wanted to have a paper trial, but we managed. And uh, there is a web form and. Uh, Fulfilling it in the proper way gives you the legal, uh, legal equivalent of reporting the, your incident as you are required by the law. And uh, this is the free right uh, options. And you are other or uh, individual citizen you can report anyway, and we handle that. Actually, before the, lo the law uh, com c came into action, we got the most reports from the individual people because, as I said before, organizations are not very keen of uh, admi admitting to getting hacked. And uh <coughs> there are penalties in the law that if you, uh, if you don't report what you, are what you should, there is a f one penalty up to 30, I think, uh, Thirty thousand dollars, and if you ignore the law at all, and you are essential service provider, that the penalty is uh, to up to three hundred thousand dollars, something like that. Means so we have the system of the of cybersecurity split into political areas. Uh, we we built market for the security services because it was not a big market in Poland before and for certifications and audits too, because all the essential service providers and digital service providers must be covered by some cyber service and, uh, s and audit every two years. And there's about thousands of, uh, about a thousand of uh, essential service providers. And they're forced to cooperate because except for the banking sector, which uh, cooperated quite nicely, Every other sector is not very uh, is not very uh, united uh, in the fight for cybersecurity, and sometimes it is underst understandable because, like, water works in every part of the country w are independent, but uh, so for some uh, for some sectors that that they sh they should do something, but until there was the law, they did nothing. The sectors are uh, forming into their uh, defin uh, law def uh, legal definitions, but they form into some kind of uh, loose, uh, loosely connected organizations, and they work at establishing their own cells, sector level cells, because the law allows that. And then uh, the sector level cells will know the, se the specific, uh, specific uh, problems with within the sector, for example. We talk to the air sector and they have crazy problems like uh, when a uh, plane goes to the other side of the world and there is hacked, uh, is hacked there, exactly we whose, uh, whose responsibility is, is it is then. We don't, we're not sure yet. And thank you. And are there any questions? So Westrone, the name thing. Um, in there you said that you require everyone to report an incident to you. Now, we probably define an incident a little bit differently. Do you mean more of a breach, or do you actually want to know like at the incident level, which is a much smaller event? For the essential service providers, the requirement is when the essential service is disrupted. And then uh, we at the national level search, we def uh, check, uh, verify. I skipped that part because it's not very interesting. Uh, there are in the law, there are two levels of incident. There's normal incident and there is a serious incident. And the serious incident uh, triggers various uh, legal procedures of criti critical management of the country and so on. But uh, you are 
re required to report stuff that uh, that impacts your essential service or digital service. Several years ago, Cert Palestra provided a, a feed of, uh, of detections that they were picking up, spo you know, like bogons and um, and ASN takeovers. Sorry, I guess. But is that still provided at the organization level? Yes. Yes. Uh, uh, probably you are talking about the N6 platform, and uh, this is a. Uh, yeah. A few years ago it worked uh, in a different way, now it is a web service when you, uh, you should be notif notified about the change, I think. Uh, you, s uh, you sign up for this and uh, if you are in Poland, uh, there is you submit your address range and you are not in Poland that you talk to the people about cooperation. And then you get some, uh, some data feed about uh, the detections and uh, security events. Yes, it's still working and uh, you can... That was available for five years. You need to get vetted by, I, th I think, uh, I don't know who you represent right, right now, but uh, I think it's possible you get to it. It's tough. Okay. Uh, first of all, uh, or if you are an essential service provider, you get a notification uh, from the government that you are qualified as essential service provider in this and this sector. And then uh, you are aware that you have the all these obligations. But uh, if you are not an uh, essential service provider, well, it is what I'm doing for the last three years, I which is going around everywhere and uh, talking to people. You should report incident. We won't help you. We will just want to know, and again and again. Actually, it is. Uh, I consider it a big, uh, big success that uh, some shit posters on the internet uh, are uh, scaring each other, other by saying, "I will report you to the Dijonet, to the uh, abuse." Uh, section and they are afraid of that. Uh, we they, the, the, uh, the Dijonet cannot do much but uh, they are scared of them and uh, I think it's a good thing. Anyone else? Okay. Thank you then. Thank you. <laughs>